talk to you guys. And as Julie, the our uh, master of ceremony mentioned, uh, our speech will be uh, will be around artificial intelligence and its effects around and across uh, the blockchain uh, arena. So let me kick off with a very broad question. Um, we have been talking, we have been writing a lot as our business review about artificial intelligence, generative AI, and those kind of issues. But where do you see AI's biggest potential in blockchain and Web3? Amir? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, I appreciate uh, the, the time, Sardar. Uh, so I'm an AI lawyer. I represent mostly foundation model developers, uh, Cohere, Stability, uh, some of the big names that you've heard of. And I think what's really exciting about the intersection of AI with blockchain web three, uh, to take an easy example, uh, you look at what AI can do in generative AI with image generation, right? Right now, in particular with video, we're at 24 frames per second, which means we can render images in real time effectively. So what you can solve for today is, uh, you know, uh, Zuckerberg's uh, sort of adventure, misadventure with the metaverse and having characters, you know, without legs and kind of lampoon these really silly looking things. You know, we were being asked to imagine this highly interactive world, but we had these ridiculous looking avatars, right? Um, when you when you use generative AI and in particular video and image generation with any number of the vendors today, you can render worlds and, and characters uh, in real time. The AI can do it, you can direct it, you can be prompted. And so I think the real engine to imagining the Web3 that we've been told will exist, to the true multiverse, will be enabled and affected through AI. I think I think uh, Meta just got the order wrong, right? right. It wasn't going to be the metaverse, then AI. I think it's got to be AI first, then, then a multiverse. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a very solid uh, point. Thank you, Amir. And I would like to follow up with uh, Ben. Ben, uh, the same question for you. Rev, do you see the biggest effect of AI uh, in blockchain? And is there any place, any specific area that has got an affinity? So I, I think the interaction between AI and blockchain can go both ways. AI can help blockchain, blockchain can help AI. In terms of AI helping blockchain technology itself, it really gets down into the guts of how, how, how blockchain works. But I, I think, for example, in Singularity Net Ecosystem, we've launched a project called HyperCycle, which is a ledgerless blockchain. And it's very flexible regarding what consensus mechanism you can put in different parts of the hypercycle network. But what you find is if you have machine learning to help combat different sorts of attack vectors, then you can use faster and cheaper consensus mechanisms in the network. So there's there's a potential for machine learning to help in, 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 in the guts of, of blockchain technology. But what's to me, more interesting and ultimately more important is blockchain as an infrastructure for AI itself. If you if you look at what's right. happening in the AI world now, AI is dominated by a, a few large tech companies in, in the U.S. And, and in mainland China. And I mean, this this is a major risk for humanity, if, if you ask right. me, because I, I don't trust these big companies to create the AGI thinking machines that are going to launch the, the technological <laughs> singularity and all that. I would rather see AI advance toward human level intelligence on a decentralized infrastructure that's not owned or controlled by any small set of parties. What we need is for blockchain to be scalable enough, mature enough, usable enough, cheap enough, that you can actually use it to run whatever AI model beats the crap out of GPT-4 and, and, and takes the world by storm next year. And blockchain technology isn't quite there yet, but I mean, there, there, there's rapid advance right. so that there's some hope it will be there soon for serving the infrastructure of AI networks, just as there's a hope that it's very soon there to serve the infrastructure of, uh, of Metaverse, as, as we've just heard. Right. Um, let's have a look at the smart contract 
area as well. Uh, we all know that uh, AI is bringing a huge automation and intelligent automation power. Uh, so um, how can this intelligent automation power of AI can we revolutionize or uh, can change the functionality and the efficiency of smart contracts? What's your take, Amir? Well, I think part of the clue rests in uh, OpenAI's announcement at their developer conference earlier uh, this, this week, week de yeah. developer day. Uh, well, what they announced was the ability to effectively, not, I, I don't know why they named it the way they did, but they said you can train your GPTs, and what they mean by that is effectively you can have a individual, uh, your, your individual account has go forward memory and it has a real sort of memory space. And, and they really mean you can fine tune their GPT model on your particulars. So I can upload, so as a lawyer, I can upload um, all of my media mentions or all of my articles or thoughts uh, around AI and I can then effectively fine tune or train the G my instance of, of their GPT in order to think more like me. Now the advantage of that is then I could tell the machine, well, create these smart contracts under these parameters. In other words, I could use no code training. Mm -hmm. And I think what we're gonna see is, you know, you could upload, let's say for example, if, you, if you've been trading on DeFi or whatnot, you have a bunch of smart contracts you could upload those smart contracts to the GPT, you can fine tune it, and you can have it execute various strategies uh, based on exogenous data and, and, and do that in a no-code environment. I, I, it's a complete game changer. Right. What's your take, Ben, on that? Well, there are certainly relatively simple near-term things one can do, which, which is interesting. You can use LLMs to create smart contracts, just as you can use them to create Python scripts and so forth. But I think that the larger impact will come over the next few years. And there, there is a potential for the next generation of AI-fueled blockchains to make smart contracts that actually are smart. And I mean, the term smart contract has, has often been observed is a peculiar misnomer because essentially all smart contracts are neither smart nor are they contracts, right? And they don't all necessarily need to be contracts in, 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 a, in a legal sense, but we have a potential to make them actually smart. So if I look at what we're doing in the Singularity Net ecosystem, we have a new programming language we've developed called Meta, M-E-T-T-A, Meta Type Talk. This is an AI language we've created for an AI system called OpenCog Hyperon, which we're using to connect large language models with knowledge graphs and logical reasoning engines, other, other sorts of AI techniques. But this meta language, we're also using as the smart contract language of the hypercycle ledgerless blockchain. With this sort of design pattern, instead of using Python to script your AI and Solidity to write your smart contracts, you can use the same language for smart contracts and, and for AI scripting. And so you don't have to have this artificial division. If we look at the Singularity Net AI middleware layer that, that we launched in, in, in 2017, the way that's architected, you have a sort of Docker container, you have an AI process in there, then you have a smart contract in there separately and they're talking together. That's what we're doing on Singularity Net now, but the, the next generation that, that we're rolling out next year it's the same language for the smart contract and the, and the AI script, right? And this, this sort of integration lets you do more of your AI in a secure data sovereignty respecting way without sacrificing performance. And, you know, we're doing this in our Singularity Net ecosystem projects, but I think as we saw with SNET originally, once we do something, others will copy. And, and yeah, I, I, th I think you'll see more smart contracts that are actually smart, which, which right. will enable all sorts of applications across different vertical markets. Right. Um, 
Recently, we published an article uh, mainly focusing on the relationship between AI and creativity. And there, were, there was a huge debate going through if AI is going to be a positive impact for creativity or it's going to kill creativity and make everything obsolete. So um, when we are talking about AI's empowerment on blockchain, what's your take about the creative potential? Do you think that AI can increase blockchain's creative potential by bringing some innovative approaches or generative approaches and tools, Amir? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, AI is a creative tool. And and I think it, it does what we instruct it to do. And I think uh, it has an incredible ability to upskill and allow people to, to meet their own creative potential. I have zero artistic ability mm -hmm. completely so no. if it's if it's possible to have negative artistic ability i have it but with using you know uh sdxl or midjourney or dolly 3 i'm actually able to create something uh that's reasonable to express my mental concepts when i'm trying to put together let's say a presentation and and that's a province that you know before that had been left to like the one kid in our grade school class who was naturally gifted and they could draw the cat better than everyone else right and the rest of the class just you know was was left with uh, you know just poor depictions of that. Now we all have this tool, and so I, I think it increases and enhances net human creativity. Um, and I think most artists, now that they've had a chance to digest, um, are actually beginning to view it as a tool more, or beginning to view it more like a camera, right? right. Um, as an addition, because when the camera was first introduced it was also viewed as a threat and we were all told as a society that it was going to kill creativity right and and we've seen i don't think that's that's turned out to be the case so i think once society acclimates to this new tool people really start using it i think it'll it'll further enhance creativity i give one other example i have a friend who's a um, uh, a musical artist, uh, Imogen Heap, and her and I were on a panel together, and uh, she was asked, well, would you allow uh, an AI model to train? Would you create an Imogen uh, AI model? And, and she said, yes, of course. And, and she was asked, well, then what is the first thing you would ask the Imogen model to do? And she said, in the most creative answer possible, she said, I would ask it to create an album that the real Imogen would never make. And my mind was blown. Like, as a linear thinking lawyer, I never would have thought uh, for the first thing is to create an album that the real person would never make. So I, I think there's yeah. a world of creative potential. So in the creative hands, it will be a really good enhancement as well. I think so. I think creatives and artists will always think differently than normative people like myself. And I don't think AI is going to change that. Ben, I know that you have a creative person, so I would like to hear your perspective about that. Well, I, I think the answer we just heard is a reasonable answer if you're talking about AI tools as they, as they exist at this exact moment. But that's almost, it's going to be obsolete within six months or something. So the thing to remember about AI is it's a broad collection of techniques and methods, and it's very rapidly evolving. So if you look at generative AI models as they exist right now, they're not terribly fundamentally creative. They're basically derivative. They mix and match among the training data that was fed in. They can create whole artworks, but they're kind of boring most of the time. You can use them to create bits and pieces of artworks and then assemble them into your own better artworks using human creativity, and that's, it's a fun thing to do. I mean, it's a new tool to add to the palette of, 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 of tools that, that you have. On the other hand, my own view is as AI advances year on year, it's going to be tremendously more capable in a few years from now of doing its own original creativity, and I, I would, I would bet everything I own and, and more if I could borrow it that, that you know, within, within, let's say, five years, AI is going to be creating superior creative works to humans by humans' own aesthetic evaluation across almost all media, say all, 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 all media that are mo modern and digital, maybe not stone carving or something, right? And right. what does that mean? 
from a business view, it poses difficulties for people making making money by creating art or music, right? Because if, if you can synthesize a hit song that the average teenager likes better than the hit song that humans composed, then you know whoever owns the AI will just spit out more hit songs. Now, that's an economic issue, one among a large tangle of economic issues relating to AI doing things that people previously did better than computers. As a, in terms of human creativity, I mean, I'm a musician, but I've never tried to make money from music, not yeah. because I'm terrible at it, just because there's there's other ways to make a living. They're a lot lot less problematic, like like building AI systems, for <laughs> example. So I mean, for me, even if an AI can compose songs that are more popular and better in some sense than the the ones I can compose, I don't care. I, I would enjoy using AI tools to help me make music just for fun. So right. I think AI will continue to prompt and enhance human creativity in amazing ways. But I, but I do think AI will be fundamentally creative, you know, at, at the level and beyond the level that, that people are. And b both will happen. And the economic impact is, is, a, is a whole other story, of course. Right. Just, just sure. to spice things up, I'm going to respectfully disagree. I think human creativity, I, I view it as more asymptotic. Sure. And I think that human creativity, by its nature of being a natural deviation from normativity, right? So I studied neuroscience uh, before I became a lawyer. And if you look at our brain systems and the distributions of normativity, right, we get creative geniuses, which are really genetic anomalies. That's just the way evolution works. I think evolution's always gonna stay one level ahead. And I think to the extent that we have a corpus of training data that's really regurgitating us, right, um, I, I think, the the interesting part, and I think we're agreeing probably. The interesting parts of creativity we're, we're not, will we're always not agreeing be ahead. At all. No. I think the boring. I think the baseline will move up, but I'm I'm convinced that human creativity will be ahead. And I'll add one other thing. I, I am so my perspective is actually not about today's models or yesterday's models. Most of my clients are the large foundation model developers sure. who have been training. You know, I I, I see the model that's going to be released in three months. I, I, I don't think that large language models will surpass human creativity. I don't think that particular AI paradigm has that potential because it is, it's recombining surface level features of its training. Right, so then we have to move to non-transformer based, which is theoretical and- so Oh, it's not theoretical. I mean, transformers are a tenth of a percent of the AI research field, right? So but, but it's, right, but it's all of the use cases that people are actually using. It, it certainly is not. No. Other than uh, predictive analytics, machine learning, no one got excited about predictive analytics in 2023. Well, what people got excited about and what works are loosely correlated. But tra transformers are, are amazing at certain applications, certainly. They're not by any means the only thing being pursued in, in the AI field. No, I right. agree with that. When we're talking about creativity, I, I don't think this particular architecture is going to surpass human human level creativity we we we, 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 we do we do we do agree on that but i mean in the whole history of the ai field i mean many people sounding very knowledgeable and serious thought me ai could never win at chess until deep blue did they said ai could never win at go they, they said an ai could never do exactly what chat gpt can do until the day, day it was released so i mean ever since i entered the ai field in the 1980s i've been hearing people say AI hey, cannot do this next thing because human brain's special and and until ai can do every single thing humans can do and right. more Someone looking very serious is going to tell me, hey, I will never do this last one thing because people are so special okay. and you can't prove it until the AI does it, right? So okay, guys, as a journalist, I really like the constructive disagreement, but yeah. we have a, a very limited time. So there is a very crucial question I would like to shoot to you guys. I mean, I'm starting with you because this is your uh, domain, the legal aspects and the ethical considerations about AI. Uh, this is also a very broad topic, but in two minutes, how do you see the ethical and the legal issues around blockchain and AI? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave ethics to one side because I think more morality and mores are, are personal, mores are more national and social. Uh, I'll speak legally. I, uh, I'm defending three of the copyright litigations right now, the Anderson case and both Getty cases in the U.S. Um, I, I, I'll be very brief. I think in the U.S. Um, the answer is very clear that training AI systems, at least with respect to foundation models, is in almost every case going to be a fair use. Okay. Um, it, it, I think there's an there's a, there's a immense body of case law, and it's a well understood concept in the US. I think other countries, um, some of which I've consulted with, are, are trying to emulate the U.S.'s commercial fair use exception. So what's interesting is in the United States, we see the Senate questioning whether we should maintain a, a commercial fair use exception in the United States under copyright, whereas other countries, including the U.K., but we've seen Japan come out, Singapore, Malaysia, Israel, um, uh, South Korea come out and say, well, we want to be permissive uh, jurisdictions for training. We don't think that training AI systems uh, would, would be a, an infringement of copyright. Okay. Ben? The question about the ethical and the legal issues. Well, I don't think I will try to address the legal issues as, as uh, Amir has done so. As a lawyer is on the he, stage, he, yes. He, he's a lawyer, yeah. <laughs> In terms of ethical issues, there are many classes of ethical issues associated with, with AI. I mean, there's very obvious near-term issues like AIs that are biased against, against minority groups and AI violating copyright and so forth. And I do feel these can be dealt with within the framework of, of traditional laws that are, already exist, as, as, as we've just heard. And they, they can be dealt with all right. I mean, then there's, there's ethical issues to do with the impact of AI on society. Like, OK, what happens when AI takes almost everybody's jobs? And these are much harder issues, sure. and they have to do with the structure of our economic system. I mean, I think in the, in the developed world, everyone will just have to get universal basic income because <laughs> there's going to be no jobs left. But who gives universal basic income in the Central African Republic is not obvious. Do they go back to subsistence farming? What sort of global destabilization happens, right? And then, then, then you have the longer-term ethical issues like do we create the Terminator, as most people in America <laughs> seem to think, or do we create AIs that are friendly, loving, and helpful to people, as most people in, in Asia seem to think? And there we're into, into the great unknown. But to tie this back to blockchain, I mean, I, I have a strong intuition that the latter two sorts of issues, the impact of AI on economy and society, and the long-term impact of AI on humanity, I have a strong feeling these things will come out better if the AI is not only open source, but not owned and controlled by any monopoly or oligopoly, be it government or corporate. And this brings us back to the need to be able to use blockchain as part of the infrastructure of the world's smartest AI systems. And right now, blockchain networks are not quite up to the task, but you can see the promise, and that's what we're working on with Right. Singularity Net, HyperCycle, other projects in our ecosystem, and other cool projects across the blockchain world. Great. Amir Ben, thank you very much for the pleasant conversation. Really appreciate Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks thank for the questions. You.